Could Bathsheba have refused King David's advances? This question really set me thinking, actually, especially since we've just done a Q&A on David's adultery called Why Didn't God Kill David for Adultery and Murder? We often focus on David's side of the story, but what about the woman he slept with? Could she be involved somehow? In this video, we're going to dive a bit deeper into our analysis of the story by exploring what other biblical figures in similar situations have done. We'll use that to decide whether she is spiritually guilty or not. After we have that figure out, we'll investigate what reasons she might have had for doing this and whether those reasons justify her actions or not. So, with that said, let's jump right in. We'll go through verses 2-4 to four of 2 Samuel chapter 11 so that we can refresh our memory of the story and try to see what her actions reveal about her intent. And it came to pass in an eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba? the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers, and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Bathsheba was aware when she entered David's chambers that David wanted to do something with her that was not spiritually lawful. Yet, it's clear from the story that she did not try to refuse it. This is important because it was written in the laws of Moses that if a man tries to forcefully commit adultery or fornication with a woman, the woman should cry out, not just to call for help, but also to declare her opposition to the act being committed. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 25 to 27. The fact that Bathsheba made no attempt to call for help showed that she was kind of in on the act too. In addition, Bathsheba never tried to tell David that what he was doing was wrong and against God's laws. Tamar, who was raped by Amnon in 2 Samuel chapter 13, had done so before the act took place, showing that she did not support it. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. That's verse 12. But Bathsheba did not say anything like that. Do you see where I'm getting at? If Bathsheba was a righteous woman, she would not have just let David do it so easily. It doesn't mean she could have prevented David but there would have been signs of her unapproval of the act. In this story, there are no signs, hence it points towards guilt. It could be argued, though, that Bathsheba was intimidated and consented for fear of her own life, but saving one's own life at the expense of obeying God is not as open to sympathy in the Bible as similar cases might be in the world. Jesus said that we as children of God should not fear death or whatever powers of this world want to do to us because we obey God's laws. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That is Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Those who were given a stamp of approval by God Almighty sometimes had to do things at the risk of their own lives, safety, or reputation in society. Look at the three faithful Jews and the way they challenged King Nebuchadnezzar, who, as we read in Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, could easily sentence them to death. Look at the way the Hebrew midwives refused to kill all the male Israelite babies in the land in Exodus chapter 1, verses 15 to 21, even though it was an order from the Pharaoh himself. Look at the way Joseph refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife in Genesis chapter 39, verses 7 to 12, despite similarly great consequences. Thus, fear of death or punishment does not really justify one's sin. After all, if we have faith in the resurrection of the dead, then saving this life will be of less importance since we will have an eternal one in the future. Apostle Paul said that our view of death should be different due to our faith and hope. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. See also John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. Of course, one could also argue that Bathsheba was simply obeying the king's orders. But the same God who wants authority to be obeyed, according to Romans chapter 13, verse 1, is also the same God who believes his laws regarding marriage should be obeyed too. In other words, his laws overrule obedience to authority when obedience to authority would mean sinning against him. That's why the apostles told the Jewish leaders at the time, we ought to obey God rather than men. That's Acts chapter 5. Verse 29. And lastly, Bathsheba might have not refused the king because she felt that being the wife of a king was of higher social status than being the wife of a normal soldier. Since the king brought the opportunity forward, she decided to not refuse it. This would make sense considering that she was willing to advocate for her son to be king instead of his elder brother Adonijah. In 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 15 to 21. The Bible does not really tell us which of the reasons it is. But regardless, the answer to this question remains the same. Bathsheba could have refused the king, and God would have been on her side. So, I think that answers this question as, could Bathsheba have refused the king? If you didn't watch our previous video on David's adultery, then I think you should watch that, as it offers a completely different perspective, honestly, regarding that event and what God Almighty thought about it, and why he forgave such a big offense, even though... In the Old Testament, it had been banned and those who did it were actually supposed to be killed. So why was David exempted from that and what might that mean? So if you want to learn more about that, you might want to check that video out. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed already, then make sure to subscribe. And hit the notification bell too to be notified when next we post. And guys, honestly, if you have any thoughts about what we said in this video, like for example... I mentioned three reasons why Bathsheba might have committed this sin of adultery. If you agree with them or disagree with them, then why not share your thoughts in the comment section below and start a spiritual conversation. Spiritual conversations are beneficial whichever direction they go because they spark interest in God's word. And God can, through these discussions, reveal some important truths about his mission. Anyway, have a good day. And God bless you.